Shout out to tell them, everybody. We greet you in the name of um, Ahaya, Asherah, Ahaya, and his son, Yadche, Meshiaka, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruaka, Kedoshi. We thank you, and we're coming back on this Shabbat today. We bless you with peace and prosperity in the name of Ahaya. Uh, we thank you for joining us this day with Hebrew Readers Church. We hope this becomes your church home and that you continually grow in, in the comfort of Meshiaka, Yadche. Uh, today we're going to be going over the understanding of the calendar. Um, Brother Kafafo, you'd like to get started? All right. Uh, this lesson is to understand the true Hebrew calendar, as Brother Zakwa mentioned, from the creation and the new moons of the year. So we can understand what these things really mean and make sure we are doing things according to the proper order. Uh, can we start in the book of Enoch, chapter 72, verse 1 to 2, please? All right. The book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven, the relations of each according to their classes, their dominion, and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, with Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws exactly as they are, and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. So we see that Enoch was shown what's going to happen until the new creation. So we can be assured that what I have showed to him shall be and is already. Because we've seen that the luminaries, everything has laws. Ahai is righteous in all his works. Uh, can we continue verse 2, please? And this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, as it's rising in the eastern portals of the heaven and is setting in the western portals of the heaven. Uh, the sun was ordained for us to follow to account the correct days, the Sabbaths, the months, years, and feasts and seasons. Let's read Jubilees chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, please. And Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days, and for Sabbaths, and for months, and for feasts, and for years, and for Sabbaths of years, and for Jubilees, and for all seasons of the years. Sun is that great sign. That's what we have to keep up with to make sure we're doing things according to the proper order. Can you continue, please? And it divideth the light from the darkness and for prosperity, that all things may prosper with shoot and grow on the earth. The sun is what divides the light from the darkness. Hence, we know when a day is complete and when a day is coming on from the sun. All right. The year ends with equal parts day and equal parts night. According to the Hebrew records, the original count for parts in a day are actually 18 parts and roughly 80 minutes per part, unlike what we go according to today with the 24 hours and 60 minute parts of a day. So we can understand the difference from the ancient way as opposed to how it's being done today. Can we read Enoch? Chapter 72, verse 31 to 34, please. And on that day, the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for one in 30 mornings and sets in the west of the heaven. And on that day, the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts. And the night is equal to the day. And the year is exactly as to its day, 364. 
That 31st day is the last day of the year. That's why when it's equal past day and equal past night, the year comes to its completion to exactly 364 days. This happens every year because Ahaya's way of doing things is even, it's equity, it's in all righteousness, there's no confusion. Um, let's continue to help our understanding that the first day of spring is when the year is complete. Uh, read verse 33 to 35, please. And the length of the day and of the night, and the shortness of the day and of the night arise through the course of the sun, these distinctions are made. There we see, as Jubilees attested, the sun is the great sign for days, for Sabbaths, for years, for Sabbath years, for feasts and all that. It's accounted by the sun. All right, continue, please. So it comes that its course becomes daily longer and its course nightly shorter. And this is the law in the course of the sun, and his return is often as he returns 60 times and rises. The great luminary which is named the sun forever and ever. See how Enoch was shown these things by the angel Oriel, right? And then Moses was told by Yachet the same things, because Ahaya is one Alahayim, is one understanding. The records support each other because they are true. All right? Now the moon. The moon is named Yareka because she is a light that flows behind the sun. She is like him in that they are both of equal size. And this understanding is known from Enoch chapter 72 verse 36 and 37 where it reads, And that which thus arises is the great luminary, and is so named according to its appearance, according as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets, and decreases not, and rests not, but runs day and night, and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon, but as regards the size, they are both equal. Now the actual word for the moon, as we mentioned, Yareka, you can find that in uh, Strong's Concordance number H3394, and that's the literal name of the moon, Yareka. You have the root words Y, R and a C H when you look at the Hebrew characters. And the word Ya means to move, and Yara means to be carried away with like a bag. When a woman takes her purse and her bag is flowing behind her, that's Yara. And the other root word, the R, is Re, which is to burn. Like in the Igbo language, you would hear them say Iroku, which is a flame of light. Hence, the word Yare already is a moving light. It's a flowing light, a flowing flame of light. And then the last root word, ka, means to be like, which lets you know she's flowing like the sun. Right. She's flowing behind him and moves like she moves, even though she does a different course and rises at different times. Again, that root word, ka, which means to be like, shows how the moon flows behind and goes like the sun. Hence, the word is Yareka in the ancient Hebrew language. Now, we see that's what her name actually is, what she actually is, Yareka. Now, we can't follow or make observations of the moon because it will lead us to error. Can we read Jubilees chapter 6, verse 36 and 37, please? For there will be those who will assuredly make observation of the moon. I would disturb the seasons and comes in from year to year ten days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony, and an unclean day a feast day, and they will confound all the days, and the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. Now we see what was attested if we make observations of the moon. One won't disturb the proper year and all the feast days, the months and the Sabbaths by following the great sign, the sun, 
because a full year accumulates the 364 days as opposed to following the moon, which comes in 10 days too short. According to Jubilees chapter 6, verse 36, can we look for confirmation that the proper year comes in with the sun in Enoch chapter 74, verse 9 to 10, please. Thus I saw their position, how the moon rose and the sun set in those days. And if five years are added together, the sun has an overplus of 30 days. And all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years, when they are full, amount to 364 days. They are full, they amount to 364 days because that's a full year every time. The leader is the sun, so following it will keep a year in perfect justice can we read Enoch chapter 74, verse 12, please? And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly, so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day until eternity, but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days. It was amazing with this verse. We noticed it didn't make any mention of the moon bringing in the year with perfect justice. Because if you make observations of the moon, it's going to lead us to error. It's going to cause us to go astray. Hence, we are shown by scripture not to follow the moon or make observations of the moon, identifying the feast. We're going to get understanding of seasons that happen every year in the world. Now, can we jump to Enoch chapter 75, verse 1 to 3, please? And the leaders are the heads of the thousands who are placed over the whole creation and over all the stars have also to do with the four intercalary days being inseparable from their office according to the reckoning of the year. And these render service on the four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year. All right, so there are four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year. Converse 2, please. And owing to them, men go wrong therein. For those luminaries truly render service on the world stations. One in the first portal, one in the third portal of the heaven, one in the fourth portal, and one in the sixth portal. And the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations. This was letting us know that we would error according to the new moons. Right. The four days, the four interclary days of the seasons, we would error according to it because we didn't understand. Right. Let's read uh, Enoch chapter 82, verse 1 to 7, please. And now, my son Methuselah, all these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee. And I have revealed to thee everything and given thee books concerning all these. So preserve, my son Methuselah, the books from thy father's hand and see that thou deliver them to the generation of the world. I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children, and thy children that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations. This wisdom, namely, that passes their thought, and those who understand it shall not sleep, but shall listen with the ear that they may learn its wisdom. And it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Blessed are all the righteous. Blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness and sin not as the sinners. In the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heaven. Entering into and departing from the portals for 30 days with the heads of thousands of the order of the stars. Together with the four which are intercalated which divide the four portions of the year, which lead them and enter with them four days. See, Enoch testified to his son, make sure you pass this on to your children because this is wisdom. This is the wisdom that we needed to get on the right track. And it truly is a blessing to be receiving this wisdom of accurately reckoning our days according to the 364 days of the world stations in perfect justice so that we are not guilty of the sins of those who do not accurately reckon the days of the sun traversing the heaven. When we read verse 5, 
please. Owing to them, men shall be at fault, and not reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year. Yea, men shall be at fault, and not recognize them accurately. Confirmation that it was foreknown and foreshown that people, we would go astray concerning the new moons. And we already know a big part of it is from making observation of the moon. Right. Not understanding what the words actually meant and what it was actually about and what the law actually commanded us to do. As we can see now, why records like Jubilees and Enoch we were told not to read or they were not spiritually inspired because these books will lead us onto the right way. All right. Uh, can you continue, please? Verse 6. For they belong to the reckoning of the year and are truly recorded thereon forever. One in the first portal and one in the third. One in the fourth and one in the sixth. And the year is completed in 364 days. And the account thereof is accurate and the recorded reckoning thereof exact. For the luminaries and months and festivals in years and days as Uriel shown and revealed to me, to whom the Adonor of the whole creation of the world has subjected the host of heaven. He said that this reckoning is recorded forever. This calendar is not a worldly calendar. This calendar and these feasts aren't the rudiments of the worlds after the traditions of men and the commandments of the doctrines of men as Paul spoke about in the New Testament. This calendar and these feasts are according to the traditions of Christ, who is above sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven, and these feasts and this calendar is written on the heavenly tablets. So we can understand when we follow this calendar and these feasts, our mind is on heavenly things, and we're keeping festival with our Allah Hayyam, His holy angels, and our Lord, Yahshua Christ. And now it's interesting to see how Enoch was given all the major information as opposed to Jubilees, where Yahshua kept it real simple for us and just told us what to do. <laughs> because Enoch confirmed what Yahshua showed to Moses. He said, and the year is complete in 364 days. Same thing Yahshua testified to Moses. And the account thereof is accurate and recorded reckoning thereof exact. So once we have this 364 day, we will fulfill the year exactly. There's no such thing as a leap year in the true year written on the heavenly tablets. And it says for the luminaries, the months, the festivals, and the days, Uriel showed me and revealed to me. So Enoch saw how it all worked out. And Yache kept it simple for us in Jubilees to just say, the sun is a great sign for days and Sabbaths and everything. Yahweh made it really easy for us in the simplicity that is in him. Let's uh, also read Enoch chapter 82, verse 10 and 11, please. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at their times, in their orders, in their seasons, in their months, in their periods of dominion, and in their positions. There are four leaders who divide the four parts of the year into first, and after them the twelve leaders of the orders who divide the months. And for the 360 days, there are heads over thousands who divide the days. And the four intercalary days, there are the leaders who sunder the four parts of the year. That right there, Enoch just gave the explanation of how the calendar is set up according to the angels who are appointed over all of it. Right. He said, you have the four leaders who divide the four parts of the year, spring, summer, fall, winter. They enter first. And after them, the 12 leaders of the orders who divide the months. You have all 12 months accounted of their angels over them. Right. And for the 360 days, they are heads over the thousands who divide the days. So you have 360 days and then the four intercalary days, which are the four seasons of the year, the initial day, which we know as new moons. That's the 364 days of the year, every year. We can't go astray by the perfection of it. Now, in the Hebrew records, you find that there are names of the months given. All the names of the months are regular names 
you have the first month in uh, Exodus chapter 13, verse 4, that's been given the name Abib. Abib meant to be tender, green, that is a young heir of grain. So it's really talking about spring, because that's when you have the new ears of corn coming up. And then the name got changed after the Babylonian captivity. You can see they called it Nisan. And then the word Nisan meant their flight. Then the second month they called it Ziph in uh, 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. It means brightness. And then you have the third month, which is called Sivan. You can find that in Esther chapter 8, verse 9. It means they're covering. And then the fourth month is just called the fourth month because the Hebrew records that we have been shown have the righteous using that name in reference to the month. And the same goes for the fifth month of the Hebrew calendar. And then you have the sixth month, which is known as Elul. In Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, the concordance number is H434 and H435. And that means worthless, worthlessness, good for nothing. And then you have the seventh month, which was named Ethanim in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 2. That's Strong's concordance number H388. And it means enduring, right? And then the eighth month they call Boom, which is found in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 38. And the Strong's concordance number is H945. And it means increased produce, right? That's for the eighth month of the Hebrew calendar. Then the ninth month, they call Chislu or Kislu. You can find it in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1, Zechariah chapter 7, verse 1, and Maccabees chapter 4, verse 52. And the concordance number is H3691. And then the 10th month is called Tibet in uh, Esther chapter 2, verse 16, and it means goodness, right? That concordance number was H2887. And then the 11th month is called Sabbat, and it's found in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 7. And the concordance number is H7627, and it means a rod. All right? Then the 12th month is called Adar, which is found in Ezra chapter 6, verse 15, and Esther chapter 3, verse 7. And it means glorious. The concordance numbers are H143. All right. Hope that's helpful. Continuing, we see from what was shown to Enoch that there were the four interclary days, there's the 12 months, and there's the 360 days to equal the 364 days of the year. There's also scriptural confirmation that there are truly 12 months in the year. If we look at Jasher chapter 9, verse 8, please. And Terah had 12 alahayim of large size made of wood and stone. After the 12 months of the year, and he served each one monthly, and every month Terah would bring his meat offering and drink offering to his alahayims. Thus did Terah all the days. There we see he made idols for the 12 months. We can also get more confirmation that there's 12 months. We can read Jubilees chapter 25, verse 14 to 16, please. And at that hour, when the spirit of righteousness descended into her mouth, she placed both her hands on the head of Jacob and said, Blessed art thou, Lord of righteousness, and Allah of the ages. And may he bless thee beyond all the generations of men. May he give thee my son, the path of righteousness, and reveal righteousness to thy seed. And may he take thy sons, many during thy life, and may they arise according to the number of the months of the year. And may their sons become many and great beyond the stars of heaven, and their numbers be more than the sand of the sea. So now we know Jacob had 12 sons, so it shows that whether righteous or unrighteous, 
they knew there were 12 months in a year of all time. As we've seen, Enoch <laughs> way before had been shown the actual true calendar uh, documented on the heavenly tablets actually were. Now, you can confirm the new moons are not celebrated the same as the 12 months of the year. Let's look at Jubilees chapter 29, verse 15 to 16, please. And he sent to his father Isaac all his substance, clothing and food and meat and drink and milk and butter and cheese and some dates in the valley. And to his mother Rebecca also four times a year. Between, four times a year. Between the times of the months, between plowing and reaping, and between autumn and the rain season, and between winter and spring to the Tower of Abraham. See, he was sending gifts to his parents at the Feast of New Moon because it said in chapter 29, verse 16, and to his mother, Rebecca, also four times in a year between the times of the month. So that's not talking about the 12 months of the year. Right. You're right. Between plowing and reaping, that's the summertime. And between autumn and the rain season, that's what comes after summer, right? <laughs> And then he says, and winter and spring to the Tower of Abraham. Spring is when the year starts back over. So you can see it was during the feast of the new moon that he was sent all these um, victuals unto his parents. The seasons are what are known as the new moons. They are the four interclary days, spring, summer, fall, and winter. The interclary days, which are called new moon feasts, are a great stumbling block people to try to calculate by the moon since it is actually different angels over those four particular days in a year according to scripture as we have been reading about. The new moons of the four seasons are called new moons but we do not follow the moons as you now know to know which day is the feast day because we know if we make observations of the moon we're going to error. Let's look at the word for new moon to get understanding of why the Hebrew word is called as it is and see how it correlates to the moon as well. Uh, we have uh, the concordance number of H2318 and H2320. The word is kodoshi or kodoshi. And the, can you read the definition please, Zakwa? Uh, the strong definition, a primitive root to be new, cognitively to rebuild, renew, or repair. Renew or repair. Let's look to understand why it means this in the Hebrew language today, still spoken among the Bantus. The word kodoshi means to, to repair, rebuild, or be new, or to renew, even new moon. Among other meanings, this word is actually describing how something is renewed or repaired. The four seasons are renewed every year. Hence, kodoshi means rebuild, renew, etc. Because each season builds up to the next season until the new one comes in. Then it builds up to the next season and so on. The moon is also called new moon when she is renewed with her light for a good example of understanding the word. This was very helpful for us. Can you read uh, Enoch chapter 78, verse 11 to 12, please, Brother Zakwa? During all the period which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun during 14 days. Her light is accomplished in the heaven, and when she is illumined throughout, her light is accomplished full in the heaven. And on the first day, she is called the new moon. For on that day, the light rises upon her. She's called a new moon because her light renews on that day. We discussed before the actual name of the moon is Yareka. So we know the moon's actual name. And now through scripture, we understand why the moon is also called Kodochi. Is not literally meaning that the moon has to be correlated with the new moons, feast days, the four interclary days. It was just a name she was given describing what actually happens 
when her light rises up in her on that first day. Now, going back to understanding the word Kodochi, and uh, you have like the concordance number H2318, where it means to rebuild because the root word Ka is in the Yoruba dialect still to this day. Ka in Yoruba means to build or construct. And then the same concordance number H2318 means to repair because of the root word Do in the Igbo. Do means to make right, hence repairing, to set up, to make, arrange. Also, the root word chi is in the Igbo word chi, which means in place of, as if replacing something in repair. So you can see how each season comes in and replaces it to repair for the next season, continually going along, because the word chi also means continuous. It's a, as a suffix, hence that's the last word of the word kodoshi, so you have ka means to build, do means to make right, to set right, and chi, chi means to set in place of. So you have a build, it's set, and it's put in place of every year, four times in a year, the seasons replace each other, right? Kodochi. So as we see each season is set up, at its appointed time, they build up to the next season, and that replaces them. So one can see from the root words, kodochi helps understand, is describing what is actually transpiring because the Hebrew language is descriptive, all right? So that's the word for new moon, kodochi. These four seasons, these four new moons for the intercalary days were made feasts and they had sacrifices that were required for them. Henry Jubilee 6, verse 23, to 24 and 28 to 29, please. Right. Jubilee chapter 6, verse 23. And on the new moon of the first month, and on the new moon of the fourth month, and on the new moon of the seventh month, and on the new moon of the tenth month, are the days of remembrance. And the days of the seasons and the four divisions of the year. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever. And Noah ordained them for himself as feasts for the generations forever. So that they have become thereby a memorial unto him. And on this account he ordained them for himself as feasts for a memorial forever. And thus they are ordained. And they placed them on the heavenly tablets. Each had thirteen weeks. From one to the other passed the memorial. From the first to the second. From the second to the third. And from the third to the fourth. Those 13 weeks, that's 91 days. 91 four times is 364. So you can see how it's consistent. Once we're on track with the proper calendar that is documented on the heavenly tablets, we're aligned with Allah and it cannot be undone. Um, we read these ancient records of Jubilees and Enoch. We can also see that the new moon feast was and indeed an appointed feast day in uh, Psalms 81, verse three and four, please. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the Elohim of Jacob. And that law was appointed in Numbers chapter 10, verse eight and 10, please. You can read that, please. Numbers chapter 10, verse eight. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And verse 10. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginning of your months, ye you shall blow with the trumpet over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I, Ahia, your Elohim. There we have comfort to see how these things were appointed in the law and confirmation to know the true feasts are being given to us here in these times by Ahaya's mercy. Uh, let's go back to Jubilees and finish it out. Go from Jubilees chapter 6 verse 30 to uh, 33, please. All right. Jubilees chapter 6 verse 30. 
And all the days of the commandment will be two and fifty weeks of days. And these will make the entire year complete. Two and fifty weeks. Seven times fifty-two is three hundred sixty-four. So you can see I was consistent all the way around. Okay, continue, please. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tablets. And there is no neglect in this commandment for a single year or from year to year. That lets us know there's no such thing as leap year or doing less, less days in a year. It's this way from year to year. There's no neglecting of it. 364. Okay. And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feast. For everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons, and the years will be dislodged from this order. And they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances. So, for the children of Israel, and whomsoever fears Allah, it's a command for us to observe the years according to the reckoning of 364 days. And this will constitute a complete year, so that we will not disturb any of the days or the feasts. It's not a light thing to not be on the right track with the calendar and the proper holy days and Sabbaths and even the actual days of the year. It throws us off completely. So you can see why this, what seemed to be something harmless, like setting different times instead of having the, a day start when the sun sets and it's night, to change it to having a day start at midnight. These things seem harmless, but in truth, all of it threw us off. Because it would disturb us from keeping the ordinances. Uh, continuing in the book of uh, Jubilees, chapter 6, verse 34 to 37, please. And all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the paths of the years, and will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths, and they will go wrong as to all the orders of the years. For I know, and from henceforth will I declare unto thee, and it is not of my own devising, for the book lies before me, and on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained. Least they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. See that this changing of the calendar and changing of the way things originally were was to cause us to go astray. And it was foreshown that we would do it. And this lets us know why Ahayah said in Jeremiah chapter 10, what is it, verse 1 to 4, um, learn ye not the way of the heathen? They made the Julian calendar and the current Gregorian calendar, which are not accurate by the alteration of the perfect 364-day year for what they've changed to a 365 and a quarter for every year, which then brings a leap year and just continues to throw everything off. And they also start days at midnight instead of at even, according to the scriptures, when the sun is down, like the scriptures show us to do. Also, the beginning of the year has been moved to the dead of winter instead of starting at the beginning of spring, which is the true time of renewal, which the earth itself even testifies because everything starts growing in the springtime. So you can see how what they've done has thrown us off. Hence, we've been dislodged and have been led away. Because we inherited lies from our fathers going away in sin. So our fathers inherited lies too. And then we go into captivity and take on the lies of the nations. The calendars, the feasts, the practices, the way of life that we have learned in our captivities and also the way of life that the Gentiles have inherited from their fathers because they inherited lies also. So we've all been led astray. The children of Israel and the other nations have been led astray. And it also lets us know that partaking in the feast of the Gentiles is definitely an act of error and ignorance. Because we don't know that 
when we partake in the feast of the Gentiles, is not submitting ourselves to the righteousness of Allah because there were principalities, there are spirits of authority that have been placed over the nations to lead them astray. According to Jubilees chapter 15, about verse 30 and 31. Knowing the spirits of authority have doctrines of their own that they have led the nations astray with, Paul was warning us not to be beguiled by the philosophies after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ, that would beguile us to worship angels by observing the ordinances the Gentiles observe after the commandments and doctrines of men of the world, who have angels and spirits of authority placed over them to lead them astray. Now we can avoid the worshipping of any other angels or spirits by observing the commandments given to Israel, because Allah did not appoint any angel or spirit over them, because he alone is their ruler, and walking after the doctrine of Christ, holding the head of the church, wherein we may increase with the increase of Allah, living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Allah, and keeping his feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. That's why when we are converted, I say we particularly, speaking of the Hebrews and the Gentiles, we turn back to worship the Allah of heaven. Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya is his name. And we take on his covenants and his laws. And then we are restored unto the promise that was made to Abraham, that he would be a father of many nations, so that it may be fulfilled in Yahweh Christ, that seed of promise that he would indeed be a father of the Hebrews and the Gentiles through faith in Yahweh, and we all would be keeping the feast days by faith in Yahweh and obedience unto Ahaya Alahayam. Now, sadly, Ahaya said it was written in the books before, and he's seen what we were going to do, and he is not his fault because everything's written and accounted, and we were told. Now, continuing in Jubilee 6 and 36, please. For there will be those who will assuredly make observation of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year ten days too soon. For this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony, and an unclean day a day of feast day. And they will confound all the days the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. And there we see it's not a light thing to change the Sabbath day. It's not a light thing to change the feast day. These are actual abominable things and unclean things that we have done. So we have need of repentance to turn on to the right way so that we may walk in the light of Christ Yache. For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason they will go wrong as to the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals, and they will eat all kind of blood with all kinds of flesh. It's amazing how it's not even a light thing enough that we were profaning the feast days. We even would be turned to eating unclean food and things of that nature. So you see how one iniquity builds up to something else and we just get far gone. And it's no surprise why the feast of the Gentiles usually require eating some unclean food. So... May we be encouraged just to come away from it all. With all this understanding, hopefully this was helpful. And now that we have been given the grace to know the true calendar again, we have the website to download the calendar as well. And also this lesson you can find on the website on, on the tab called Holy Calendar and Holy Days. And download the PDF as well. Uh, and that's, that's it. All right, so uh, praise the higher. We hope you all enjoyed the lesson. Um, if you have any questions about the topic of the calendar, just send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com, and um, we'll definitely get back to you guys. All right.
Shabbat Shalom.